Okay, in this example, we're going to simplify the expression 2x squared minus 2xy plus 4xy. And we've got four answer choices here. A says we'll take x and multiply that by x plus y. B says we'll take x and multiply by x minus y. C says we'll take 2x and multiply that by x minus y. And answer choice D is 2x multiplied by the quantity x plus y. So let's talk about the, the algebra way to do this. And then let's talk about you know, how you could use these answer choices to your benefit if you didn't, if you didn't remember how to do the algebra. Kind of a way to, to maybe do it based off those answer choices. Okay, so let me grab my red pen here. So the thing that I notice in this problem to get me started is I, I see that there's pluses and minuses, addition and subtraction. So in this case, we have three terms. We've got this 2x squared, the 2xy, and the 4xy. So I look at each one of those as sort of little individual, you know, sort of little individual things. When they're multiplied to me, they're all glued together. So the 2x squared is one of them, the 2xy is another one, and the 4xy is another. So the first thing I look at is I look at the numbers in front of each of these terms. So I've got a 2, a 2, and a 4. And I think, what's the largest number that will, that I can, uh, that will go into 2, 2, and 4? Well, 2 is the largest number that will go into each of those. So I can factor a 2 out front. The next thing I look at is I look at the variables. OK, so I, I see an x squared. I see that this one has x times y. And I see that this one has x times y. Notice each one of these terms involves the variable x, the letter x. That means I can factor x to some power out. So I know it's x to some power. Okay, now the question is, what should the power be? Should it be 1? Should it be 2? Should it be a million and 5? Well, what we do with this case is, now we look at the exponent. So we don't write it, but x, we could write that as x to the first. And again, we've got another x to the first power there. So what we do is we look at the, the exponent on the x's, and we take the smallest exponent. So I see the numbers 2, 1, and 1. Well, the smallest power is going to be 1. So I'm going to write that. The next thing I think is, well, the second, third, and the third term both involve a y, but the first one doesn't. So if you had you know, a whole bunch of terms, and even one of them didn't have a y, that means you can't factor it out. So I've now got everything that I can factor out. So now I'm going to put a set of parentheses. And I started with one, two, three terms. My first step, I'm going to have one, two, three terms. Now, a couple things to point out here, um, and we'll let me just do it straight. Let me just do it um, immediately right now. And we'll, I want to point something out in just a second. A couple things. So I think two x multiplied by what would give me two x squared. Well, two times one would give me two x multiplied by x, that's going to give me x squared. Remember when we have like bases, we add the exponents. So x to the first power and x to the first power is going to give me x to the second power. 2x, let's see, excuse me, so 2 multiplied by negative 1, that's going to give me negative 2. The x is already accounted for. We still don't have the y though, so I will need a y. And the same thing for the last one. I think 2 multiplied by what is going to give me positive 4? Well, that's going to be a positive 2. x multiplied by just 1 would give me x. So again, we don't need any extra x's. But again, we're missing a y. Now the thing, um, there's one last step we can do here, and then we'll be finished. We've got 1x minus y plus 2y. Notice these are actually like terms. We have a negative y and a positive 2y. We can combine those. So a negative 1 plus 2, that's going to give me a positive 1y. And that's going to be our solution. So a couple things to point out. One thing to point out is you could have recognized that the negative 2xy and the positive 4xy are like terms right at the beginning. So I could have written this as 2x squared minus 2xy plus 4xy. That's going to give me a positive 2xy. 
And the same thing, I could go through the same process. I could think, well, I could factor a 2 out. I could factor an x out. To get the stuff back in the parentheses, I would need an x. And I would also need a y. And again, you can distribute and make sure that you get the correct answer. So that honestly probably would have been a little quicker and a little easier. I just jumped right into it and didn't even really think about it. So uh, one thing, you know, so I guess one moral of the story is you could do them in different ways and still get the correct answer. But definitely, you know, this would have been the smarter way to do it, to recognize that there are like terms at the beginning. But even if you don't, that's okay. So... Okay, so if you feel comfortable with that algebra way, I would say perfect. I would go on to the next one. Suppose you had no clue about how to do this in terms of the algebra. This is kind of the, the long way to do it, but again, if you had time, you know, if this was at the end of the test, this is what I would do. I would pick some numbers, you know. Maybe let x equal 2, let y equal 3, and put it into that original expression. So I'm going to do this quickly. So if I put in 2 for x, I would have 2 squared. Again, everywhere there's an x, I'm going to put in a 2. Everywhere there's a y, I'm going to put in a 3. And I'm going to simplify that. So 2 squared is 4. 4 multiplied by 2, that's 8. Uh, negative 2 times 2 is negative 4 times 3 is going to be negative 12. 4 times 2 is 8. Multiplied by 3 is going to be 24. Well, let's see, 8 minus 12, that's negative 4. Negative 4 plus 24, that's going to be 20. Okay, so now what you could do is you could go back to all of your answer choices. And you could substitute into each one of these 1, 2, 3, 4. You could substitute in the value x equals 2 and y equals 3. And see which one of these gives you the value of 20. Now, it could be possible that you, you know picked, you know, bad values of x. Almost never, if you do this kind of trick, never use 0 and never use 1. Because notice if I picked x to, to e x to be 0, if I let x equal 0, each one of these answers would have worked out to be 0. Okay, and it still wouldn't help me. So as a rule of thumb, don't let x equal 0, don't let x equal 1. But notice if I substitute in, so we said it looks like um, part D was our correct answer. Notice if I let x equal 2, and y equal 3. Again, it's going to be a lot of arithmetic that you're doing, but if I plug, finally get it to the last one, I would have 2 multiplied by 2. 2 plus 3. Well, 2 times 2 is 4. 2 plus 3 is 5. 4 multiplied by 5 is going to give us 20, and I would think, ah, you know, whether I put 2 and 3 into the original expression, where I put 2 and 3 into answer choice D, I'm still getting that same value of 20, and that is good. If you put 2 and 3 into A, B, and C, you can check that you won't get 20. Again, you want to know the algebra way, because if you do it this way, it's going to take you, it's going to take you quite a bit of time. But um, again, just another way to, to use the answer choices to your advantage if you do have a little bit of extra time on the exam.